The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, by Arundhati Roy. The novel begins with the story of Anjum, a hedra, transgender, woman who lives in Delhi and runs a guesthouse called the Janet Guesthouse. Anjum is an outcast from society, but she finds a sense of belonging with the other hedras in her community. We learn about her life and experiences, including her upbringing as a boy named Aftab, her gender reassignment surgery, and her struggles to find acceptance in society. The novel then shifts to the story of Tillo, a woman who was once in love with a man named Musa. Tillo is now a political activist and lives a somewhat nomadic life, moving between different parts of India and abroad. We learn about her past with Musa, as well as her involvement in various political movements. We are then introduced to Musa himself, a Kashmiri man who is involved in the separatist movement in Kashmir. Musa's story is intertwined with that of Tillo, as we learn about their past together and the political struggles that have shaped their lives. As the novel progresses, we meet other characters who are caught up in the ongoing conflict in Kashmir. These include a doctor named Azad Bharatiya, who is trying to make a difference in the lives of people in the region, as well as various militants and political activists. The novel also explores themes of identity and belonging, particularly in the context of Anjum's experiences as a hedra. We see how Anjum struggles to find a place in society, and how her identity shapes her relationships with others. Throughout the first ten chapters, the novel also grapples with issues of social inequality, gender, and sexuality. We see how these issues intersect with politics and conflict, and how they impact the lives of ordinary people in India and Kashmir. Overall, the first ten chapters of The Ministry of Utmost Happiness offer a rich and complex introduction to a novel that explores some of the most pressing issues of our time. Through the stories of Anjum, Tillo, Musa, and others, the novel offers a nuanced and thought-provoking examination of politics, identity, and human connection. The novel continues to explore the lives of the various characters introduced in the first ten chapters, delving deeper into their histories and relationships. We learn more about Tylo's past with Musa, as well as her relationships with other men, including Naga and Bilal. The novel also introduces new characters, including a journalist named Anjum's story continues to unfold, as she becomes involved in the protests and political movements that shape life in Delhi. We see how her experiences as a hedra inform her political views and her activism, and how her relationships with other hedras evolve over time. The conflict in Kashmir remains a central focus of the novel, as we learn more about the complex dynamics between different groups and individuals involved in the separatist movement. We see how the conflict has affected the lives of ordinary people, including those who have lost loved ones to violence. The novel also explores themes of family and community, particularly in the context of Anjum's experiences with her biological family and her chosen family among the Hedras. We see how these relationships are shaped by social norms and expectations, and how they can be both supportive and challenging. Throughout the 11th to 20th chapters, the novel continues to grapple with issues of identity, gender, and sexuality. We see how these issues intersect with politics and conflict, and how they impact the lives of the characters in complex and nuanced ways. Overall, the 11th to 20th chapters of The Ministry of Utmost Happiness offer a deepening exploration of the themes and characters introduced in the first 10 chapters. Through the lives of Tillo, Anjum, Musa, and others, the novel offers a powerful meditation on the complexities of human experience and the ways in which politics and personal relationships can shape our lives. The novel continues to explore the lives of the various characters introduced in the earlier chapters as they navigate the complex and often violent political landscape of India. Tillo remains a central figure in the story, as she becomes more deeply involved in the resistance movement in Kashmir and struggles with her feelings for Musa. Meanwhile, Anjum's story takes on new dimensions, as she becomes involved in a project to create a cemetery for the marginalized and oppressed in Delhi. This project brings her into contact with a wide range of characters, including a young boy named Saddam and a wealthy businessman named Garson Hobart. The conflict in Kashmir also continues to play a major role in the novel, as the violence escalates and the stakes grow ever higher.
we see how the conflict impacts the lives of ordinary people, including those who are not directly involved in the fighting, but who are caught in the crossfire. Throughout the final chapters of the novel, the themes of identity, gender, and sexuality remain central. We see how these issues continue to shape the lives of the characters, and how they intersect with the broader political and social context. The novel's ending is complex and multi-layered, as it weaves together the stories of the various characters in unexpected and moving ways. Ultimately, the novel offers a powerful meditation on the nature of love, loss, and the struggle for justice and liberation in a world that is often hostile and unforgiving. Overall, the final chapters of The Ministry of Utmost Happiness bring the various threads of the novel together in a powerful and deeply affecting way. Through the lives of Tillo, Anjum, and the other characters, the novel offers a profound reflection on the complexities of human experience and the ways in which we can find hope and meaning even in the darkest of times. Here's a summary of some of the key characters in The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy. Anjum, a Hedra, transgender person, who lives in a community of other Hedras in Delhi. Anjum's story is one of self-discovery and identity, as she struggles to find a place in a society that often marginalizes and oppresses people like her. She becomes involved in a project to create a cemetery for the marginalized and oppressed in Delhi, which brings her into contact with a wide range of characters. Tillo, a young woman who becomes involved in the resistance movement in Kashmir, and who forms a complicated relationship with Musa, one of the leaders of the movement. Tylo's story is one of love, loss, and the struggle for justice in a world that is often hostile and unforgiving. Musa, a Kashmiri man who becomes involved in the resistance movement in his homeland, and who forms a deep connection with Tillo. Musa's story is one of courage, sacrifice, and the struggle to maintain one's ideals in the face of overwhelming odds. Saddam Hussein, a young boy who lives in the old Delhi neighborhood, and who becomes involved in Anjum's cemetery project. Saddam's story is one of hope and resilience, as he navigates the challenges of growing up in a world that is often harsh and unforgiving. Garson Hobart, a wealthy American businessman who becomes involved in Anjum's cemetery project, and who is drawn to the idea of creating a space for the marginalized and oppressed. Garson's story is one of privilege, guilt, and the search for redemption. These are just a few of the many complex and multifaceted characters in The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, and each of them brings a unique perspective and voice to the novel's exploration of identity, gender, sexuality, and the struggle for justice and liberation in contemporary India. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe our channel for more book summaries.